Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Right before leaving Hawaii for Asia, Trump did one thing that has Obama seething with rage. You have to understand that one of the main drivers of the establishment's seething hatred of Trump is not just that he beat them all. Yes they hate him because he took on both establishment parties and kicked their butts. First he took down Jeb Bush and the rest of those hapless and hopeless candidates. Then he went to work on Hillary Clinton. It was bad, how badly he beat her, but it would have been worse if it was Crazy Bernie or Liz Warren. Trump is simply better at the game. Remember when he came out and was going to make a huge statement about Obama's birth certificate? The media was whipped into a frenzy and ran to get the best spot for the press conference where they just knew Trump would break big news. All the networks were there, all live and all were captivated, waiting. The backdrop was no accident, it was his new Trump Hotel in Washington. While the cameras fixed on his magnificent hotel for what seemed like forever, Trump came out and embarrassed the media. He made a quick comment about Obama being American and then took the media on an extended tour of his new hotel. If We Beautiful and the media fell for it and he got a free 30-minute commercial on all the major networks. So as the media followed his every move in Hawaii and with Obama and Bush complaining that his business interests are creating a conflict for him, Trump did what Trump does best. Hit them all back hard. As Trump was driving to the airport, with the press in tow, he made a surprise stop. According to Newsmax, he stopped at the Trump International Hotel Waikiki. He got out of limo, walked into the hotel and met some of his employees and then left. The establishment howled, what about the emoluments clause, how can you do promote your own hotel while president, and all the other nonsense they hurl at Trump on a daily basis. A weaker man like Obama would be cowed and would fall in line quickly. But not Trump, he does it his way with no apologies. Sarah shut down all the whiners saying simply, Trump wanted to say hello and thank you to the employees for all their hard work. Which takes us back to the main drivers of Obama's and Bush's resentment for Trump. Yes he beat them all, but more importantly they are all jealous of him. He built a fantastic company. He doesn't owe anyone anything. He has the courage to do what he wants, even while living in that media fishbowl, without worrying about polls or what the media thinks. These are things Bush and Obama always wanted but never could grasp. And they are jealous. Share if you agree. President Trump overrules advisors, fires shot that will echo throughout history. President Trump is not the traditional president America is used to and the haters will come around. All they have to do is open their minds and give him a chance. Easier said than done with the liberal left in America who preys on closed minds for votes and graft but eventually all things pass and the democratic stranglehold over their voters will end. If not they will join the Bush family in the dustbin of history. President Trump is setting the tone for a new kind of American president, one who tells it straight, no matter how politically incorrect, who is not afraid to use America's considerable leverage throughout world to finally get America better deals, and one who embraces the military. From saving money on military contracts, to trade deals that finally are fair, to supporting our troops, Trump is delivering. All we want is a fair deal so we can quietly outcompete the rest of the world as we have been doing for so long. But Trump alone among our past leaders really understands how to use America's big stick and he just overruled his advisors and fired the shot heard loud and clear by every other military in the world. And one so powerful it will echo throughout history. Like other great lines of past presidents. Speaking in front of our frontline troops at Troops Yokoden Air Base in Japan Trump said, you are the greatest hope for people who desire to live in freedom, and you are the greatest threat to tyrants and dictators who seek to prey on the innocent. History has proven over and over that the road of the tyrant is a steady march towards poverty, suffering, and servitude. But the path of strong nations and free peoples, 
certain of their values and confident in their futures, is a proven path to prosperity and peace. We dominate the sky, we dominate the sea, we dominate the land and space. Let's repeat this line because it will go down as one of the great lines in history of presidential speeches and is guaranteed to echo throughout history. We dominate the sky, we dominate the sea, we dominate the land and space. Share if you agree. As Trump took stage in Japan, he took off his jacket and got greatest surprise of his life. Trump just landed in Japan moments ago on the first stop of his five-nation tour of Asia. Trump wants to unite with the Japanese to present a strong front against North Korea. Trump is on a 12-day trip and spoke with U.S. and Japanese forces at the Yakodan Air Force Base. Right as he walked on the stage, Trump got an amazing surprise. You can watch the moment below at the 33rd minute. The U.S. forces there gave Trump a bomber jacket. It looks so nice. Trump is facing down fire and fury. He is on the front lines and the media is attacking him from behind. Aerial drills occurred near North Korea this week and tensions are at an all-time high. Trump in his brand new fly jacket. He looks good. Share this if you are praying for our president. Let's show him how much support there still is out here, y'all. We cannot quit fighting just yet. Donna Brazile just risked everything to tell the one secret that'll drain the damn swamp. Donna Brazile is on a tear. She has nose released excerpts from her book called Hacks. The inside story of the break-ins and breakdowns that put Donald Trump in the White House. The book reveals that Donna Brazile was haunted by the death of Seth Rich. Drudge recently tweeted out that Brazile was so paranoid about getting shot in the head that she shut all of her blinds. Here's what Drudge tweeted just now. Brazile writes she was haunted by murder of DNC Seth Rich, and feared for her own life, shutting the blinds so snipers could not see her tweeted Drudge on Saturday afternoon. Brazile writes that she was haunted by the still unsolved murder of DNC data staffer Seth Rich and feared for her own life, shutting the blinds to her office window so snipers could not see her and installing surveillance cameras at her home, wrote Philip Rucker of the Washington Post. This is startling. Who do you think Donna Brazile was scared of? Sound off below with who you think it is? Share this if you think that Donna should tell the truth. Let's make this go so viral that she gets it and tells the damn truth about Hillary Clinton and the DNC. Antifa protesters clash with Trump supporters in Texas, immediately regret it after this video goes viral. Owen Schroyer from InfoWars went to Austin, Texas to cover the entire event. The biggest thing that happened is that Antifa hid like the cowards that they are. According to Owen Schroyer, the Antifa rally was a total dud. All the Antifa people in Texas never showed up. This was another awesome report by Owen Schroyer and he showed how dumb Antifa looked. Owen Schroyer, Refuse Fascism launched their big protest nationwide and that is to end the trump bence regime. It was nationwide. They spent millions of dollars on this. They bought full-page ads in the New York Times. Today rolls around and it's a dud. Here in Austin you had about 30 Trump protesters. You had about 50 police officers protecting them. And then you had about 200 or more Trump supporters out here, waving flags, American flags, Gadsden flags. Talking to one another, having a good time, singing the national anthem, while standing. Share this if you are glad that these Texans stood up and slapped down these Antifa idiots. This is why you don't mess with Texans. Rand Paul assaulted in his home moments ago, look what sick Democrat did it. Senator Rand Paul was assaulted at his home in Bowling Green. Kentucky by neighbor while he was mowing his lawn on Friday. 
the assailant has been arrested and identified as Rene Boucher. Rene the assailant was arrested and charged with one count of fourth-degree assault. He caused minor injury according to local law enforcement officials. The senator was mowing his lawn at around 3 p.m. when Boucher assaulted him. The neighbor also confirmed that the two have been in an ongoing feud. Warren County Jail Senator Paul was blindsided and the victim of an assault, Kelsey Cooper, a spokeswoman for Paul, said in a statement to TheHill.com. The assailant was arrested and it is now a matter for the police. Senator Paul is fine. Voting records indicate that the Kentucky State Board of Election list is a Democrat, according to the Daily Caller. No surprise there. Democrats are violent. Boucher's Facebook was found containing many anti-Trump posts. He shared a report about Republican congressman body slamming. Share this if you think Democrats need to stop attacking Republicans. This is getting way out of hand.